Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the shopping cart project that we are doing. Up till now we have done the shopping cart product list UI and today we would like to implement the add to cart functionality. So let's first take a quick review on what we have with us. By the way if you want the link to the current code base uh, I have provided that in the description and also I have provided a github repository URL just if you want to follow along with the development as well. And of course the previous video that we have done the link of that is also provided in the description. So let's see what we have right now. Let me just open up our project really quickly. Also let me open it up in my editor. So this is the code base that we have currently. The component directory is the one that we have uh, you know we have been working with so we would like to move further today we would like to work on services and also let's see the compilation and here it is compiled successfully let's open it up in our browser and this is the UI that we have so basically what we want to do today is we want to make this add to cart button work. So this time around these cart items are really like placeholders. There's nothing calculated or anything like that. Filter is also just a placeholder, but we are not going to work on the filter anyways. We what we are interested in is we want to go for add to cart functionality working. Plus these product lists, these are also like uh, items that are just placeholders. They are static listings. So uh, while we go for add to cart, we would also make this whole listing dynamic as well uh, dynamic meaning we are not going to go for api integration but at least we'll have them soft coded so that later we would be able to integrate api as well so without further ado let's get started before coding the whole thing we would like to just review what we have done so far and we have documented that in the previous video so let's open that up And here it is so we have this sort of a hierarchy created we have the ui looking somewhat like this and the folder structure goes like this so before getting the add to cart functionality working we should first understand three things one is something called services and i'd list this down one is services let's make this fonts a bit bigger services and then there is a concept in angular called dependency injection i'll just call it di and uh, then there is something called subject and observable these are the three things that we are going to go for and we would start with services and then we would see what dependency injection is and subject and observable so in order to in order to learn these things first we would not go for the add to cart functionality right away we would first start by creating a service in angular and thereby we would also like to populate these product items from that service one thing that we should understand about a service is that service always deals with data so that data could be a variable could be something from the local storage could be something from an api could be something from firebase the so services are some things that deal with data all the time so we would like to populate these product items which is our data with the help of the services that we have in order to use service we would have to do dependency injection services deal with data and um, they are singleton global objects singleton global objects so if you want to access that global object into a component you would have to do dependency injection so helps us access the global objects including services and dependency injection is used for some other things as well so including services in our components or services so basically you can use services in other services as well and you can use services in components as well through dependency injection subject and observable i would not discuss that yet but those discussions would come 
in order to get this product listing uh, going, we should just be able to do it through the help of services and dependency injection. Remember, we are not dealing with actual data, which means we are not going for any API calls or anything like that. We would just be creating a variable in service and we'd be just supplying that variable to the component that is product list so that it can load all the products from the service. All right, so let's go to the service creation. Creation of a service is really simple. We can go into our code and we can open up our terminal and simply we go for ng generate service. So to, uh, to, the short form is ngGS. And I would create a services folder to create services indeed. And my service would be related to the product. So I'll just say product. So if I say product, it'll create a file called product service for me automatically. And the naming convention is pretty solid as far as Angular is concerned. So I'm creating a product service. All right. So you can see that a service for products is created and then there is a test file as well spec.ts we're not going into spec.ts for a while so the product.service.ts is created and if i check it out you can see that product service the class name is product service and it is exported plus it is injectable which means we can do dependency injection on this and it is provided in root which means it is provided throughout the entire application so once the product service is created we would like to inject this product service into the product list component and then use this product service to get the products that's the step number one so basically the figure would go like this let me just uh, take the only piece that is cons that uh, that concerns us for now that is the shopping cart component So this is what we are concerned with, just the shopping cart component. And that's the beauty of component-based architecture. It allows us to focus solely on what we are currently working on. So just the shopping cart component. Let me just move these things a bit aside. So components are not singleton objects. Components are objects that are like multiple times declared, like product item and cart item. Services are singleton objects. Moreover, components represent the view of your front-end MVC architecture while services represent the model. So let's make that separation. Let me just draw a line so that we can separate the view and the model. So here we have a product service. And what we are expecting here is the product service should supply the list of products to the product list component. All right. We have named the product list component products just to save space. We'll keep it here. And basically, there is a dependency injection going on. And our product service is supplying product items to the products and the product is then looping through that particular product items and then rendering one item after the other so basically this is what it is so let me just color it a bit differently and um, this would be injected product service would be injected as a dependency on product list component so let's first make the product service ready and then let's do the dependency injection um, basically what dependency injection would mean that product list the component itself requires product service or it depends on the product service to function properly and let's get that done so first I'll go with the product service and I'll create a list of products as a property now products if we just uh, think about products it is an array of objects so basically what we want is something like this like ID an ID should be one, title or name should be something, all right? And um, then it should be like um, description, price and so on and so forth. And when we have multiple, uh, you know, multiple fields in an object, it is always something that is a possibility where we would be uh, having typos or we may tend to forget certain fields and all. 
in short this is not reusable because anytime you want to add another product we'll we'll just have to simply type it down the whole thing entirely again so what we want is an object that can be created from a class not the javascript literal object right because literals are really meant for something else like setting the configurations and so on and so forth while these sorts of initialization require uh, instances of classes so what we would do is we would create a class that would uh, represent one product and we would create objects of that particular class inside this particular product list so let's do that and that class would also help us in giving data type to this particular product's property because we are using TypeScript, we would like to give data type to the product's property as well. So let's do that. Let's first create that class. And what I would do is ng generate class. I'll not I'll not do generate like I'll not do GC because that'll generate a component for us. So ng generate class and I'll generate the class in a folder called models product. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a product model, a data model that represent a product. So now you can see that there is a models folder created and a product.ts, a class product created exported. There is a spec.ts that is the unit testing file created as well. I'm not bothered about unit testing yet. And this product class would have certain properties. Properties like ID, which would be a number. A name, we may go for, which will be a string. Description, which will be a string. Um price string oops price could be a number what else let's let's check the ui yeah we need an image url so image url it should be a string so here we are we have defined a product model and also we would like to define a constructor because eventually we would like to create an object or multiple objects from this product class inside our product service. So let's uh, do that. Constructor and this constructor of course returns void so we don't need to specify anything in here. Uh, this would accept an ID as a number, a name as a string and um, everything actually so let's mm, id number description well actually i'll not give the data types for now we'll just make it'll just deviate us from what we are trying to do here so id name description ideally we would like to get data types specified as well id name description uh, price and image URL. So all these fields we would like to assign them to respective fields inside the current class. Basically, this dot ID is the ID that is passed on to the constructor. This dot name is equal to name. This dot description is equal to description. This dot price is equal to price. And this dot image url is equal to image url so this is what we are trying to go with and um, say for example if the user doesn't pass any image url or a price or a description we'd like to have some default values assigned to that as well so the description by default we would like to have it blank price by default we'd like to have it uh, zero uh, and image url the default image url we would like to have is uh, the current url that we're having or maybe i can just choose another url so that once the whole thing takes effect we would some you know we'd notice some changes in so rubik's cube again and let's go to images let's pick this one i guess or or this one yeah 
yeah i don't want this data but we can anyways put this data but we don't want it so what i would do is i just pick another cube maybe this one or maybe this one this seems fine and let's put that as the default image url so the idea is that i might not be passing in price an image url or maybe at least not be passing image url every time so this is what it is id and name i would like to pass it on well description can be blank price can be zero image url can be some default image right so this is our product class now this would help us in two ways one it will definitely help us create new objects without any possibilities of errors the other way is that it would help us giving data type to this particular product variable so this is how it will go i would first include product from the respective file so it will be something like import product from models product and here what i'll do is i'll specify data type now this products the variable is an array of products all right so this is how we specify an array of products in TypeScript. All right, so product array. And the elements are new product. The ID would be one, title could be product one. All right, description could be this is the product one description. The product is really cool. All right, and the price could be 120 or something calculatable so i'll just keep it 100 all right and i'll have multiple products in and i'll provide different ids now when we do an api integration in future this uh, these things would not matter like the id the title everything would come from an api so we might not want to have these static things anymore but i'll just keep some variable uh, prices so that when we add it to the cart eventually we would be able to calculate the price based on that all right so i would also like to note down that to do populate products from an api or a local storage or some or api or any other data source essentially i will just keep it an api because usually we go for api integration in the later stages so these are the products and i would go for one method inside this service which is uh, get products and this get products for now it can return a product array this is how we specify a return type now because we have not returned anything it'll give you a red underline beneath this product array but as soon as we do this this dot products you see that everything is now fine and get products actually would you know give you the uh, products from an api so actually um, this notification or this note that we are taking we can put it in here populate products from an api and return an observable all right i'll go into what is observable but this is what we do like when we populate some things from an api we always have to return an observable rather than something which is a variable that is available with us right now so so this is our first product service method and we would like to call this method in one of the components which needs the products so i would like you to just um, you know guess for a while like which component needs this particular get products method you can pause the video think about it and then restart the video so i hope you have figured it out and if not no worries this get products method is something that is necessary for the component which is product list 
because in the product list we are going for a loop and we are looping through uh, through a static array and we are generating a product item well what i would like to do is i would like to have this one as a dynamic array and for that i would like to go into the product list component remember in our product service let me just close everything up in our product service.ts we have a get products method which gives us all the products that's what we'd be using in here but before using that particular get products method we'd have to do a dependency injection because what that would mean is product list component depends on product service to get things done so we would like to go for import product service now angular provides us a cool way of importing things you can go for something like from instead of going for dot dot slash and all like going up the level and then coming down the level it's always easy to do something like this src app services product dot service so every import is uh, based on src that is our base path and starts from src and app service this makes things a lot easier for angular programmers so uh, this can uh, the same thing can be done here as well like instead of dot dot slash models products and all it is better that we go for like src slash um, app slash model slash product right this would make it easier for us so we'd follow this approach of import um, you know src app and so on and so forth so once we import this product service class we know that product service is something which is global singleton and we don't have to instantiate it it's already created as an instance in the global space all we have to do is refer it and that's done this way and this process is called dependency injection we can do this private product uh, service is of the data type product service now as soon as i provide this data type Angular knows which instance to send in the constructor of this product list component and because it is declared as a private variable we would be able to access it through this so basically if I do something like this dot product service dot get products and if I go for a console log and if I check my console You can see that there are seven products that I get and all of them the ones that we have created all right uh, they are, they're not reflected in here all right so um, we would have to make them visible uh, that also that also makes me think here like we don't have the product name but still this looks fine so we'll just we'll just not go with the product name anyways we'll just go with the price so that will be fine so here we want to display those seven products that we are getting for that i have to use those seven products instead of this array of six elements so let's uh, let's first do that let me do it in this way i would have a products which is of the data type product array and as you can see that this one is auto imported for me and uh, which is equal to blank array to start with and in the on, in the on in it on in it essentially is a life cycle hook we are not going into this life cycle hooks of angular just yet but this is a life cycle hook. this will just get fired when your component would be mounted so basically when this product list component is loaded and all the html is okay the on in it method gets fired so we're not discussing that deeper but uh, what this would do is this would make sure that we are using uh, or we are going for this code only and only once your component is fully loaded so this dot products is equal to this dot product service dot get products so once your component is loaded we are loading the data and this products can be used inside of my product list component instead of this array you can use products so basically it is this so actually what we have done is we have named products in here as well and products here as well so i'll just 
in the product list component i'll just name it product list just to uh, make these bifurcated otherwise i would simply name it product or products if i am in you know if i'm coding for anything so product list and here it'll be product list all right so product list is an array of product a blank array to start with when the component loads successfully we are calling the product service dot get products method and that is basically populating this dot product list uh, once this product list changes or gets populated this template would re-render it, it'll it'll basically loop through the number of products that product list has in our case seven so we should get product item seven times though it'll be still static but we'll get it seven times and um, as far as this product service get products is concerned in the product service it is simply returning this dot products as sort of a static uh, variable but we would like to populate the products from an api and return an observable later all right so this is basically what it is so this api integration might not be done in this particular video so we are just going with the product as a static array so this is what it is and if i now check my output let's see how many products do we get one two three four five six and seven all right so so say for example if i in my product service if i add one more product and let's say i call it product eight product eight and i'll go for 300 to be its value all right in that case i should get eight products let's see one two three four five six seven eight remember all this text is static we would like to make this text and price and the image dynamic as well so that's the next step that's what we would do so before we move any further i'll just change this name i to product because eventually this variable is one product out of the product list so that i was really annoying same thing we would do for the cart items as well after some time so so this being done let's check what we've done thus far we have a product service that is supplying the data to the product list the product list however it's not doing anything except rendering the product item components statically what we would like to do is we would like to have this product list send one product after the other to the product item component so for that we would have to use uh, something called an input decorator eventually we would like to achieve this feat so the product service gives the data to the product list the product list one after the other delivers the data to the product item component so let me also list that down here input decorator this would help us to get the data from one component to the other basically from a parent component to the child product list being our parent and product item being our child so uh, first i would like to do this like in order to send the product item to the product item component i would just create a dynamic property product item and which would be equal to product now when i do this i would like this product to be evaluated and sent basically the whole product object has to be sent rather than the product as a string so what i can do is i can go for something called property binding all right so what this would do is this would give us a product object and the property product item would be added dynamically but in order to access this product item we would have to do something inside the product item component itself so what we are doing is we are trying to tell angular that there should be a product item property inside the product item component as of now there is no property like that probably this would give us an error and i think this is giving us an error because you can see that in the console it tells us that product item is not a known property can't bind to product item since it's not a known property so we would add that product item property to the product item component so let's go to the product item component into the component.ts file all right and what we would do is we would add the property 
product item and the product item is basically of the data type product the one that we have created this time around it didn't do any auto import so i would have to go for import product from src models oops src app models product all right so this is my product item however we have still not specified that this product item being a property in here this would be something that will be coming in from the parent component as an input so for that we would go for an input decorator from the angular code library and we would decorate this product item with the input decorator now what this means is that the product item is indeed coming in from the parent component as an input and we are storing it inside a product item property which we can access inside our template all right so as of now this would not give us any error this would work all fine however the data is still static we would like to populate the data dynamically inside the product item component.html file so so remember this product item now is a property inside the product item component which is coming in as an input from the parent component and we can use it in here for example instead of this 254 i can do something like product item dot price instead of the description i can go for something like interpolating product item dot description and um, image url because it is a property we would like to go for property binding product item dot image url now with this done let's see if it allows us to populate things dynamically you can see that there is there are images that are coming in plus there is a, a dynamically populated price and description for each and every product hmm that sounds cool up till the, the last product so this is dynamically populated and uh, let's before even moving further let's just see how this whole thing is happening at this point right first of all the product list or first of all the shopping cart component is loaded and the shopping cart is calling in app product list along with the other components app product list is of the importance right now app product list that is the product list component is doing a dependency injection of product service and there is a variable there is a property created which is an array of products which is a blank array to start with and on the init basically on the load of the product list component the product list service or the product service is uh, calling the get products method and uh, it is pulling in everything that get products returns to the product list variable and what does this get products return if we go into the services as of now we have a static array of eight products with different prices uh, we have that static array returned inside the get products method and that is what is stored inside our product list variable and in my product list component.html we are looping through that variable each element is stored in this variable that is product and this particular product is being passed as product item inside the product item component as an input and in the product item component we are taking the product item property as an input from the parent and in the html of product item component we are just loading different properties of our product item object and up till now it is working pretty okay so now the next step would be to get this add to cart mechanism functional and for that we'll have to prepare our cart component in in some manner so let's do that let's first work on the cart component and then let's work on the add to cart functionality so what i would like to do first is i'd like to create a cart items array inside the cart item 
or inside the cart component itself which would represent the cart items altogether and I'd like to initiate that array with a blank array basically with no elements at all and uh, then inside the cart component HTML I would like to show that there are no elements available if there are no elements available so basically uh, to start with if there is there is nothing added to the cart I would just say that no items added to the cart and then once the items get added I would like to populate the cart so that's how it'll go so let's let's do that first I like to have some called cart items and uh, that would be a blank array to start with and we would first check inside our cart component dot HTML that if there is a cart items available so this will be something like this a div with an alert alert uh, info no items added right something like something like no items added is what we want to show no items added which is pretty okay and uh, we would like to you know instead like once there are no items added we would not show this at all and no items added to cart or your cart is empty that's better and uh, we would just we'd show it if so basically there is another structural directive which allows us to show and hide elements so if it is ng if cart items which is an array so which means we have something called length if the cart items length equal to zero we'd go for this and if the cart items length is greater than zero then we'd go for this to be shown basically what happens is the div would be hidden if the cart item, if this condition basically doesn't satisfy while this ul would be hidden if this condition doesn't satisfy so right now provided that the cart items is a blank array we would surely see that this condition would be fulfilled while this would not and hence the ul would not be shown while this would be shown so you can see that your cart is empty is what is shown and if there is an item available for example let's say i would start with something like this um, um product id right say say it's equal to one and a quantity it's equal to say four or something like that and we would like to have a price of the product as well which may be equal to say a hundred and um, and total we might want to calculate dynamically so say for example we have four products like this and as of now these are like some things that I'm populating here just as placeholders but we would like to eventually populate them you know with some particular um, legit data that we have from the product service so ID to three four quantity this 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 and um, this is the cart item id so basically we'd also like to have a product id that'll help us so product id is one and here we can have three maybe two Four. so this is this is basically what I want as my cart item um, to be to be looking like so if I have this then you can see that the information that the notification is gone but then we have a static list of things which we would like to change uh, what I can also see here is that we need the title of the product as well so let's uh, let's have the title as well so it'll be instead of, instead of the product ID 
we would like to have the product id though for later uses uh, we would like to have the product title as well so product name would be test one anything for now just to hold things would be test three test four test five or two test four all right so this is what our uh, card should look like and this card items they're just here we are not you know populating so we if you would like to go into the card component.html replace this with card items and let's say item would be better and we do the same thing that we did with the product item component what we would do is card item is equal to item so basically we are adding one more property to the cart item the thing to note here is right now we have four uh, cart items and hence i should have four items shown but yes it'll give me an error because there is no cart item property so let's add that quickly i'll go into the cart item component the same drill that we did for the products and product item where i would like to go for input and this would auto import from the angular core cart item uh, which would be for now um, any data type i would like to change the data type as well uh, for for some time i'll just keep any just to make things working and inside the cart item component.html here i can replace things so say for example item one would become uh, cart item dot product title or product name i believe was the property see let me see product name yes product name and quantity so be basically cart item dot quantity and here what i want is it's the it's basically the multiplication of the cart items quantity plus product uh, multiplied by product price so in the cart component we are having quantity and price together so basically it'll be cart item dot quantity multiplied by and this is, this is actually going into multiple lines let me just uh, let me just put it in different lines the cart item dot quantity multiplied by cart item dot price and then we are adding a currency filter inr so let's see how it looks like and you can see test one multiplied by four four hundred multiplied by five two fifty the calculations are right um i know i know that for a fact the total however it's not uh it's not calculated properly so let's uh let's do that let's in the cart component calculate the total cart total will be zero to start with and once everything is loaded what i would do is this dot cart item dot because it's an array for each would help and this give me one item and what we would do is uh cart this dot cart total plus equal to um item dot quantity multiplied by item dot price so item dot qty multiplied by item dot price so basically whenever ng on in it happens we would like to change the card total or we would like to just um, you know get that card total done so now let's see uh, we would also like to populate that card total inside the card component of course so it would be a cart total and let's get rid of the brackets we don't need the brackets just cart total 
and 1500 to 400 plus 250 that makes it 650 plus 450 which is 1100 and 400 is 1500 so yep so the total comes up okay all right so this this works and now this is this is the cart item prepared so, so the, this is the cart uh, the cart component prepared so basically what happens is if there is no item available all right this would give us that uh, your cart is empty like so and if there are items added this would give us the items and also it will calculate the individual item total for us as well basically that's what is happening for us right now and what we would now like to do is we'd like to focus on the add to cart functionality let's go for that now so in order to make the add to cart functionality working we would like to add one more service to our system and we would like to revisit our diagram that we have the service that we would be adding would be a messenger service and i'll call it a messenger service itself it's a generic service that could uh, send messages across components the the reason why it is called a messenger service is because it will be sending a message from one component to the other now what is the message that we want to send and from which component to which component do we want to send a message the the component that is the sender of the message or the triggerer of the message is the product item component and we want to send a message to the cart component to add one product item why i say that it is a product item component is because if i click on add to cart an item should be added to the cart and uh, this particular product item component itself has the add to cart button so the sender of the message is the product item and the receiver of the message is the cart component so what we would like to do is we'd like to create a messenger service and that is one way of communicating between components by the way all right and the product item would be the sender of the message along with the message the product item would also send the product itself right so the message would be the product itself we'll color it a bit differently and the cart component is the receiver of that particular message also the cart component gives the cart item component one item after the other as uh, the product list gives its uh, product items different um, different products basically so this is the this is the thing that would happen all right so product item would trigger a message or would send a message messenger service would be sending that message to the cart and the cart would be sending the cart items it'll do some calculation and then it'll send the card items to the card item components so this is the flow that we want to have now at this point we are trying to learn two different mechanisms one is subject and one is observable one thing that we want to make clear is that the cart component would actually be observing the messenger service that is there any message from any sender and that uh, that message when it is sent it will immediately be picked by the cart component so here the cart component is the observer and what is the observable it's the messenger service while there is also a triggering mechanism inside the messenger service itself and that is triggered by the product item so we'll name those things uh, we'll name those mechanisms as different methods itself inside the messenger service so basically messenger service would have two methods one is send message and one is get message i'll make it a bit bigger All right send message and get message are the two methods that this messenger service would have send message would be something that will be called by the product item and get message would be something that will be called by the cart item get message is the observable the cart item would be observing the get message while send message is the sender is the triggerer all right so in this case we'd be using something called a subject to get this triggering mechanism started and uh, we would also use something called an observable to get this listening mechanism started between cart and the messaging service 
So once again, cart would be listening to the messenger service while product item would be triggering a message by the send message function. So let's create a messenger service, create these two send message and get message function and then get this flow done. So what I will be doing here is going into my terminal, closing everything up. Let's just leave everything behind. And we would like to go for an ng generate service. Inside the services, we would like to go for a messenger. And the messenger service would have two methods. One is send message and one is get message. Send message would be something that will be called from the product item while get message is something that would be called inside the cart component. Uh, but before doing anything or before going into any of the other components, we'll just first complete the messenger service. And now there'll be some things that will be abstract. There'll be some things that will not be explained, but they are like different dedicated topics altogether. We'll be using something called subject from RxJS. And RxJS, there is a website reactivex.io that will help you to understand what this subject is. Basically, this will help us to trigger something and also listen to something. So basically, listener and triggering mechanism would be implemented by the subject itself. So here, first, I would like to start by creating an instance of the subject. So I'll just say subject with a small s is equal to new subject. All right and we'd go for this dot subject dot next all right so this means we are triggering an event and in the get message it will return this dot subject itself which is triggering something it'll return it as an observable so that anyone that calls the get message can subscribe to whatever is being triggered over here. Also, you can imagine that the send message would be called by the product item. And what we want to send is the product item itself. So here, it will accept one product as an argument. And I would send that product inside this dot subject dot next. All right. So what we are what we are expecting here is the product on on which the add to cart button is clicked we are expecting that product inside the send message and the get message would get that product eventually all right there's a lot of things happening underneath if you want to get that explained or you know if you want to review it on your own you can go into the rxjs website itself reactivex.io and it has a good explanation of what is a subject what is an observable but that's not what we want. We just want to get that add to cart functionality working and hence we are going for um, this particular approach. All right, so get message and send message. This basically makes our messenger service complete and send message is something that I want to trigger from the product item component. So the messenger service needs to be injected into the product item component. So let's do that. import messenger service from src app services messenger service and we would go for private message we'll just call it message is of the data type messenger service so basically we are taking that messenger service global object, we're putting it into a message variable. And I would create a handler, add to cart handler. So handle add to cart. What this would do is this dot message dot send message would be done here. And it expects a product item. So this dot product item. 
would be sent. Right, and this handle add to cart would of course be uh, executed on the click of the add to cart button. So this is our product item component where we are where we are taking a message service and we are sending a message with the product item. This handle add to cart has to be called on the click of the add to cart button. So let's go into the HTML and we have an add to cart button over here. Let's just take it to different lines. And on click of it, the click, the way we go for is not on click or something like that. It'll be something in the lines of Angular. It's called an event binding. So on click becomes click, uh, on submit becomes submit, on blur becomes blur, on key press becomes key press. So that's how it goes. So click equals handle add to cart. All right. So basically type button class, whatever. On the click of it, we go for handle add to cart. What does handle add to cart do? Handle add to cart sends the message with the current product item inside the product item component. All right. So first let's verify that whether we are getting the product item inside the messenger service send message. So what we would do is console.log product. Let's see whether this happens or not. And I'd open up my console as well. And I'll just click on one of them. And I get this product one. If I click on this one, I get product five. Basically that is happening. 150, product six, product eight, so we are getting inside the messenger service.ts line number 14, we are getting the products. So basically the product comes in here. And then what we are doing is this dot subject dot next. And this is what we have to do. Everything else would happen underneath. Get message is something that has to be subscribed to by the cart component because we are sending it as an observable. The way that we handle an observable is through the subscribe method. So this we can go into the cart component and subscribe to the get message. Let's go into the cart component. By the way, the product item, the job for the product item is done. Now it's only the cart component that has to do its job. So in here, what we would do is first of all, we would go for import um, messenger service from SRC app services messenger service and we do a dependency injection uh, I would get this cart item uh, commented we don't want any items so I'll just get it commented and what I'll do here is a private message is basically um, messenger service all right and while our component initializes what i would like to do is do this this dot message dot get message and because get message is an observable we would have to subscribe you can see that as i do a dot i'd get an option to subscribe to the observable whenever there is an event that is happening anywhere in our system this subscription would get activated on its own so we don't have to specifically call this subscribe if just have to keep this subscribed and this would just listen to to the triggers that are happening from the product item component so subscribe and here i'll get the product so let's see that next product does it come over here or not i'll go for a console log product all right and if i refresh And if I go for add to cart, you can see that in the cart component.ts line number 25, we have a product available. That is the product number seven. This is product number eight. Uh, this is product number two. So everything is available. All right. So that is happening. And now what we need to do is just move this whole logic into 
into the uh, into the subscribe method so what we would do is we would like to first you know uh, we would like to first go for uh, pushing the product like if i if i just do this like this dot cart items dot because it's an array we can go for push and what we need to push here is the id of the cart item hmm. so if i want to push the id i'll just or maybe we can just get rid of the id we don't want the id for now we just ignore the id what we need here is uh, product id or we can go with the bare minimum we just need the product name quantity and price right so product name would be basically um product dot name qty we can just put one for now but we would like to do something to the uh, quantity and you can see that this is giving us an error on the data type because it doesn't know what data type the product is so i'll just add a data type to it which is basically the product and i'm sure that it would have been auto imported yes the product dot name oops i have to go for a bracket if i'm providing a data type so product dot name quantity will just keep it one and uh, price is product dot price all right so i'm pushing the uh, you know cart items and then i'm going for the cart items dot for each um before doing that i'll just you know here i'll just go for the cart total to be zero so this dot cart total is equal to zero because we are anyways calculating the total again so here there will be always quantity one and uh, our you know our total would be just uh, calculated based on whatever we have inside the cart items all right so so this being done always quantity one to start with and then we'll do something about it so we have this over here and if i go for an add product item to cart your cart is empty to start with and if i do this you can see product three into one is 50 and 150 plus 50 is 200 right now it'll always be you know um, one item added and this would repeat which we would like to change as well all right and i think for that we would need the product id because we would like to compare whether this product id already exists or not so this is this is basically what it is and um, i would like to bifurcate this um like i'd like to get this out of ng on it ng on it is really highly populated so i'll just say uh add product to cart all right and add product to cart would get the product which is product details and i will just take this whole sort of a block of code that we have i'll take this Put it into add product dot cart and the add product dot cart goes here so this dot add product to cart in which i'd go for product so our ng on and it remains a bit smaller that's what we want and the rest of the logic can be inside the add product to cart uh, as of now if i try and go for add to cart you can see that we are successfully sending from the product item we are sending the uh, products to the cart right so basically this whole messaging is happening and also the cart parent component is sending in one product at a time to the cart item so that whole thing is happening and the total has been calculated and all now all we have to do is we had to, we'd have to just implement one logic where we would have to check whether a product is already repeated or not if the product is repeated then just increment the quantity and that's it so we'll do that so here i would check um what I'm going to check here is, uh, let's say we'll go with four. Do we go for four each? Four would be better because then we can break out of it. So for let uh, item in this dot cart items. 
I instead of four in, I'd go with four off. Item of card items. Or in would be better. Hmm. I think in would be better. Right? Item of card items. Um so it'll not be item, but it'll be index. So I'll just keep it I. So what I'll check is this dot card items into the bracket I dot ID if it is equal to product dot ID. So if this is equal to product dot ID, then increment the quantity else go for this push. And here if it is there, then what I'll do is just go for this dot card items I dot QTY plus plus. Basically, what we are doing here is that if the card items, what do we have? Do we have the ID or product ID? Product ID. If the card item product ID, not the ID, but the product ID is equal to the product dot ID. If the product already exists, then what you should do is just increment the quantity. And if the product doesn't exist, then push one product into the card item as it is expecting with the quantity one. And once that is done, We'll just go for the card total. So I think this would work. Let's see. Your card is empty. Hmm. It's not working. Is it not working? Let's see if we have any errors in the console. I don't think we have any. Yep, we don't. So let's see. First of all, we'd have to check whether there is something inside the card items or not. Because first to start with, there is nothing inside the card item. And then we are trying to go for a for loop in the card items, which would do nothing over here. So uh, let's see, uh, there is one more condition that we need to add. So if this dot card items dot length, if this is equal to zero, then what we should do is we should just push that particular product into the card item itself. Right? Else we should go for this for loop. So I believe that was the problem. Uh, just a logical issue. So what did we miss was like initially the card item would not have anything. So if there is nothing in there, then just push one product to start with and then else which means if the length is more than zero now, then go for the for loop. Otherwise the for loop would not work at all. All right, so let's go for that now. And let's see. And here it is 50 product two. And then I'll go for this again. Hmm. This makes more sense because what we have done is we have done this for the total where we have reset the total to zero, but we haven't in this for loop, we haven't set the card items to be, uh, to be blank basically. And uh, also actually it's just um, break would be better. So once this matches, once the quantity is incremented, we just break out of it so that nothing else happens. Hmm. So this logic is a bit problematic and it is too complex. Let's just uh, solve, you know, simplify this one. Um, I think it'll be better if we do something like this. Like I would like to check, uh, let me just uh, comment this. I'd like to check like if product exists in the card, all right, product exists is equal to uh, false to start with, right? Product exists equal to false and I'll just go for let. And if the product doesn't exist, so basically if not product exists, then we go for this dot card item push and the whole thing. All right. 
So basically, if the product doesn't exist, go for cart items dot push. And in between, we go for this for loop. Just this. So basically what we are trying to do is that if cart item is there, then we just go for quantity plus plus, we go for a break. Before that, we also go for product exists equal to true. All right. So basically, if it is true, then this would not happen. All right. And uh, yeah, so that that is that is what it is. So so we don't need this complex uh, it is unnecessarily complex one and uh, we'd never be able to get around it with a lot of code so this is simpler one so what we start with is with a flag like does the product exist or not and then we loop through if the product matches then we increment the quantity we say product exists and we break out of the loop and uh, then if then we check if the product doesn't exist then push that product that will also suffice the uh, the way that we um, you know, have to add one product right at the start. So if the cart is empty, one product will be added automatically. So this is basically the logic that will work for us. All right, so let's let's try and do that. Add to cart. Let's just so add to cart would be here. All right, and then let's try and replicate the use case. We have this, and now we can see that product three, two hundred, the cart total updates. 200 over here product 4 product 500 then if i go for product 5 you can see that the product 5 gets multiplied thrice so yeah so this this is pretty much good to go so what you can do is you can extend this functionality by adding a delete button over here so once we click on delete once then the quantity just gets minus minus that will be a good exercise to go with right so go for it see how that works for you and here we have the add to cart functionality working. So thank you for checking out this video. And now what I'm thinking is that let's make this into a series of, of uh, you detecting me what to do next. So what you should tell me now is what do you want next to go with in this particular thing? And then we'd simply apply that whole, uh, that whole thing. For me, uh, the next thing to do would be to get a product list populated from an api and then get this whole functionality working so that'll be something that i would like to do next but um, if you need any explanation on observables or subject or something like that just let me know i can put that um, in as well so that's basically what it is uh, thank you so much for watching this video please leave your feedback comments and please subscribe to this channel for the future videos to come so let's hopefully meet in the next video Till then, bye-bye.